Good morning. Are you hungry? Are you hungry for food? Are you hungry for food as medicine? So that's what we're going to talk about right now. Let's talk about food as medicine. I hope to leave you with some food for thought. So this journey started for me about 20 years ago as an undergraduate student when I was trying to explore what I wanted to do with my life. I was a philosophy major, and as a Baha'i, I believe in the harmony between science and religion. And so religion inspires us, and then practically we discover the realities of things through scientific discovery. We also believe in universal education, so I needed to educate myself. And what I've learned along the way is what I'd like to share with you today. One of the main points of inspiration for me in becoming a physician were these writings from the Baha'i Holy Text. The people of Baha must develop the science of medicine to such a high degree that they will heal illnesses by the means of foods. And it is certain that in this wonderful age, the development of medical science will lead to doctors healing their patients with foods. It's quite a statement. I took it really personally. And so, 1997, I was doing research at Stanford on nutrition, and I was asking these questions, and I decided to go into medicine so I could really delve deeper into this. And one of the things I've learned as a practicing physician is that as doctors, we can generally do three major things. We can medicate, we can manipulate, or we can educate. I'll talk a little bit more about medication because that's a big part of what we do. Manipulation, I mean basically a surgery or some kind of procedure which can be life-saving. And then there's educate, which I think is really important when you think about things like food as medicine and other healthy lifestyles. It's education. And actually, the Latin root, the word doctor, docere, means to educate or to draw out. So when I thought about this, I kind of asked more questions about this. And, and when we look at what we do as physicians, oftentimes most of you are experienced with getting some kind of medication. In fact, 60% of Americans are on at least one prescription drug. And in the U.S., we're 5% of the world population, but we consume 34% of the world's pharmaceuticals. And if you think about that, well, these are life-saving drugs and they're very necessary. But on the other hand, what are the costs of these? Well, we know that one drug to come to market takes 10 to 15 years and 300 to 500 million dollars to go all the way to phase four clinical trials. So you need to have a return on investment, some kind of patent. If I were to tell you that just adding vinegar to a meal can help lower your blood sugar, how would I be able to patent that? What's the incentive for me to study it? And in fact, research has shown that it actually does do that. The other issue with medications is that they can not only be costly in terms of finances, but they can also be costly in terms of lives because they have side effects. In fact, adverse drug events are the fourth leading cause of death. And we now know that the opioid crisis, there's more deaths from prescription drugs that I write as a physician from opiates, narcotics, than heroin and cocaine combined. So the hope is that there's something better than that. In addition to that, is that the only way we can treat disease and prevent disease and keep healthy? How about food? Well, the next question to ask is, what are the diseases of our time? What are people suffering and dying from? Chances are, among everyone here today, you either have or know someone in your family or friend or loved one who has had one of these three major diseases. Heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. They account for seven out of every 10 deaths and 75% of all health expenditures. So we're not in ignorance in terms of what people are suffering and dying from. The question here is, along with obesity, which now accounts for 68.8% of Americans, what is the cause of this? We heard a little bit about refined sugar. That has something to do with it. But let's ask the question deeper. Is there a connection between the diseases of our time and food? In fact, there is. As much as one-third of all cancers are directly related and caused by nutrition and diet. In the cases of colorectal cancer, it can be as high as 70%. When we look at cardiovascular disease, 
upwards of 45% of all deaths from heart disease are related to diet, a lack of good nutrition in the form of nuts, seeds, and good healthy fats. Diabetes, that's pretty evident. We know that the majority of diabetes is type 2 diabetes, and that's from insulin resistance from repeat amounts of high levels of refined sugar without fiber, which ultimately leads to diabetes. And in fact, soda, diet soda, is even worse than regular soda in terms of causing diabetes. So don't feel like that's the way to get away from it. And when we think about and we look at the risk factors for food in terms of risk factors for disease, you might think to yourself, okay, well, diet is important. It has some element, okay? I just kind of made the case for that, and it intuitively makes sense. But how important is it? Couldn't smoking be more important? How about just high blood pressure? That can lead to strokes. How about just high body mass index or weight? Or even a sedentary lifestyle, lack of physical activity? These are all risk factors for disease, right? They're all related to those three major diseases of our time, heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. In terms of risk factors, the most recent study by the CDC in looking at disability-adjusted life years and death found that the number one risk factor, even about smoking, above high blood pressure, above high blood sugar, all of these things were dietary risk factors. Number one risk factor for both disability-adjusted life years and death. And yet we contrast that with the reality of medical education. As a practicing physician, I advocate for the use of food as medicine. I teach my patients how to buy and prepare healthy meals. And as a medical educator and professor at medical schools, I work on redesigning our medical education system to include nutrition and food as medicine, because it's critical. But I need everyone's support, and we all need to ask these questions together, because it's not just about one person trying to do this. In fact, in terms of nutrition and medical education, right now, on average, among the four years of medical school education, students learning to become doctors only get 19.6 hours in all four years of nutrition. That's a big chasm and disconnect between the reality of the diseases of our time, which are really critically linked to diet, and the education that physicians have about this. So that needs to change, and that's something that I'm hoping to work on with all of you. The other thing that we have to realize is because of the lack of physician leadership and understanding of these issues and education in these areas, we have food policies that are at odds with our health. The unhealthiest foods, and in fact, not real foods. When I talk about food as medicine, I'm talking about real food. I'm not talking about gelatinous yellow number five and 16 and polysorbitol 26 and et cetera, et cetera, that you can't pronounce. These are food-like substances. These are frankenfoods. They're not really foods. So you got to empower yourself and ask yourself and investigate. One of the principles of the Baha'i faith is independent investigation of reality and truth. We need to ask questions and we need to educate ourselves to know what real food is. Unfortunately, the standard American diet is pretty sad. That's a technical term, like an acronym, you know, SAD. Majority of our diet is processed food. Another percentage is animal food, and a very small percentage is plant-based. And we know that plants actually have something good to offer, in addition to oxygen, which they give us to breathe. They're nice. But it's okay to eat them. In fact, it's really okay to eat them. So I challenge all of us to ask questions and to investigate. Where is this science, as it says in the Baha'i writings, to develop it to heal by foods? We're learning some really amazing things. The field of nutrigenomics is teaching us that it's not just about the genes that we have, but about gene expression. Some genes are pro-cancer genes or pro-heart disease genes, and other genes uh, being off, those genes being turned off and not expressed can protect. Eating foods act as messenger signals that can actually change the expression of genes in a matter of weeks. Isn't that amazing? The microbiome, we're 10 to the 100th power bacterial cells, 90% bacterial cells. Eating good bacteria and fermented foods can not only help our gut health and IBS and preventing diarrhea, but it can actually boost our immune system during cold and flu season. 
Isn't that amazing? So we're learning about these things. And as this science grows, we can expand our understanding of how to heal by foods. And I hope I've given you an appetizer tonight and that you can take that appetizer to wet your palate and go ahead and stay hungry to learn more, to eat better, and to enjoy your food and enjoy your food as medicine. Be well. Thank you.